Scribe, Tango. Which one should you use? In this video, I will be sharing with you Scribe versus Tango and helping you make the decision on which one is the right platform for you. So let's dive in. So when you first sign in to Tango, it's gonna be tango.us and you're gonna be able to install the free extension. So that's the first thing they want you to do and you're gonna add that to Chrome and you're gonna add the extension and it's very straightforward, right? So it's gonna let you know that it's been added to the extension. You can just click on Chrome and you can manage the shortcuts. I like to make sure that I bring any extension that I've just done to the top by pinning it. So now I can see Tango. So it's gonna ask you to create an account. So you're going to go ahead and create your account. So now that we're logged inside and we've created our first demo, let's actually create one. So if anyone knows me, I'm obsessed with musicals and one of my favorite musicals is Wicked. So let's walk through the steps of if we were about to purchase a Wicked ticket. So we're gonna go over to Wicked and then we're gonna click on the browser at the top with Tango and it's gonna start the capture. So now I'm going to browse through and let's say for instance, if I want to do Broadway and I wanna do the North, um, if I wanted to just go ahead and click on the actual Broadway ticket Excel. So I'm just gonna to go to the date and let's say for instance, if I wanted to click on February 16th and we're going to get tickets. So from there, you're then going to choose specifically what steps that you wanna take. So this one will be in New York and we want that to be February the 16th at eight o'clock PM. So we're gonna head over to New York and then now we're gonna find our seat. So we're just gonna choose a random seat and we're just gonna go ahead and choose that. And as you can see, Tango on the right side here is acting as a sidekick. So it's capturing not only your browser, but as you go through your steps, it's capturing each step and it's manually showing you your steps. So if this is something that you like in your process automation tool, it's important that you know that there is a sidekick that automatically shows up beside you inside of Tango. This is really great for a user experience. So you're gonna go through, you're gonna click your ticket and then you're going to um, choose the specific ticket. And then as you can see here, we're gonna you know choose standard ticket and we're gonna say buy one ticket for $138.50 and then it's gonna take us to cart. And so then we're gonna to continue to check out. We're gonna go ahead and click on continue to check out and then we're gonna put in all of our information. So let's say for instance, if we were done with these steps, as you can see here to the right, it's captured my steps of what I went through to capture that ticket. I have the option to either click Tango here or down here at the bottom. So my process steps are gonna be here. I can pause, I can restart this if I wanted to, I can live blur this information if I wanted to, and then if I wanted to discard this completely, I could do that. So let's just go ahead and click on the check mark and we've captured our steps. So now that we've captured that, it's gonna give us the actual name of it. You'll see where it tells us where to click, get the tickets, and so now you're able to click inside of here and see those. So those are our actual steps. As you can see over here to the left of the browser, they categorize the steps for you, right? So there's two steps and then there's specifically eight steps to be able to do that. So you can go specifically to the steps and it'll navigate to it. I like this navigation feature. I also like that you can change around your steps by the navigation bar here, as you can see. So if you're changing this out, that makes things 10 times easier instead of you having to do it yourself. You can also do that on the actual interface itself. So like if I want to change out this step and turn that to step two instead, I could change that out, which is super helpful when it comes to the platform. Now, I'm just gonna go back to drafts and I'm going to take this specific draft and let's see here, how easy is it for me to share and export? So I'm gonna click on continue. And so now I can share this and if I can share this with my team or I can just copy this link. So if I wanted to copy this link and send this off to someone, I could and it's gonna take me to this link. So when it comes to the exporting settings, you'll notice that there is an option to embed it or also export it to HTML, Markdown, as well as actual PDF. And the PDF version is on the pro plan. So the functionalities for exporting is pretty good in here as well. And you can also copy this over to the Microsoft Word option or you know Notion for Markdown if that's something that you wanna use. So I think this is just a matter of layout and getting used to the platform and organization. And you can also add folders too. So if we wanted to say, um, if we wanted to add an operations folder here, we could do that and you could put who has access to it. You can also do workspace members 
and you can create a folder there and I could put this inside of operations if I wanted to and then I could confirm that move and then when I come to my Tango platform my team library is organized by folders and this is exactly how it looks. So that was the process of actually creating an actual um, Tango capture. Um, there are probably a bit more features but I'm not going to highlight them in this video. I want to give you a general overview as to what you can expect when actually using the platform okay let's go over to scribe and see what's happening there so we're going to go to scribe how and we're going to click on the scribe steps here and so we're going to walk through the process as if we were signing up for scribe so we would sign in and then we would continue with google so i like to go ahead and continue with google and then i'm going to go ahead and confirm that so i'm going to go ahead and put mosley's team and then click click to get started so then it's going to prompt you to get the free extension. So you're going to click on the get the free extension and then you're going to add that to Chrome. So you're going to add that extension. And once you've done that, it's going to ask you, how did you hear about us? And we're going to say something else. And I always like to put Quantel Latte. And then we're going to click on next. So once that has actually prompted and it's been there, so it's going to say start your scribe. So it gives you an option to start your scribe. And as you can see, it goes through your step and you can go through all of your steps if you wanted to. So let's say for instance, if I was going to apple.com and if I wanted to buy a laptop for my, you know, my, my computer, or if I wanted to go look at iPhones and see specific things that I, you know, me and my husband probably want to go and fix, right? So we could have that and we could just click on buy and it goes through the steps. So I'm just going to stop this scribe. You'll notice that at the top, if we click on the browser for Scribe, it's going here at the top where you could pause it here or down here at the bottom left, you can open this up and you can just complete the capture. So I normally like to just complete the capture in the browser because it's right there and it's easy. So I just stop the capture. So um, what Scribe is going to do is going to automatically pull in. It's going to give you confetti because you just did your first Scribe, right? So you can go in and make a few changes to this. There are a few changes on the back, similar to Tango, how you can go in and edit this and make the changes and you can also alter and do specific things. Now, what you'll notice is most of those features are on the pro plan. So when it is time to actually edit, like actually doing screenshot editor or advanced editing, all of these things are on the pro plan and you're able to clearly see what those edits are when it comes to Scribe. And then you also notice that there are features over here to the left that you can make as far as edits and also being able to delete the Scribe. So if you exit out of there, what you'll notice is that you are now inside of the Scribe platform and just like Tango, it is very simple, but there's a bit more of a guide over here to the left so that you're able to see documents, your teams, and whoever you're growing with. Scribe has both pages and they also have Scribe. So one of the things that I actually love about Scribe is that I'm able to embed several different individual scribes into one. So when they came out with pages, which was super helpful, it allowed for me to be able to start creating SOPs inside of scribe. So you may be thinking the scribe itself is an SOP, right? But if you really think about it, the scribes are really just great ways to capture the steps. It's not the overall process of what will take place or the workflow, right? So you can use Scribe Pages as actual workflows or you can use Scribe Pages as actual um, SOPs in themselves, right? And if you want more information on how I use Pages versus Scribes, there's a video that you will see right after this video that will tell you exactly how I use Pages versus Scribe. So if we're navigating, if you click on Documents, you'll notice that there is also um, an option for you to start sorting. So you can have private folders. You can also get granular with how, what folders you create. I like to organize my folders by operations, marketing, sales, finance, and client delivery. For home, it would probably be home. We're extremely organized because I'm an operations person, right? So we would organize it by the folders. And as you can see here, you can see anything that you've saved. Another beautiful thing is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time it's out of Scribe, right? So the pages that you create, if you created a new page, you can create that as an actual template inside of here. So when I'm done with this, I can share this and I could, you know, turn it as a public link. And then I could turn this into an actual um, page where I wanted to 
duplicate this if I wanted to duplicate this or if I wanted to turn this into a template that is a pro feature so um, if you are really struggling with why you should get pro versus actual scribe there's also another video if you go back to my channel to just go back and watch that I do have a video on that as well let's say for instance if we've gotten through this and we wanted to add this Scribe also has a guide me feature that allows for you to be able to be guided while you're going through those steps. So similar to that tango feature that we were just talking about, as you do your steps, it pulls up beside you. What Scribe does is after your capture is done, it allows for you to be able to view that scribe right beside you while you're going through the steps another feature that I absolutely love. So you may be wondering, what is the difference between the two? They pretty much do the same thing, Quantel. Like, what's the difference? The main things that I've noticed when it comes to using Tango versus Scribe, the interface and user experience is very important. When I use Scribe, it's a less intrusive recording when it comes to using Scribe versus with Tango. Tango has like a transcript feature, as you saw on the side, where it's actually pulling in the document. For some, that may be helpful. For me, that is very distracting. I cannot I don't need to see my steps as they pull in. It's gonna distract me and I just need to go through my steps as I'm going through it and thinking about it, right? The next one is organization. So Tango, as you saw, does have folders, which is great, but I do like the option to have my own private scribes to me within my business versus actually having to share them with my team. So I like the organization a bit more inside of Scribe because I'm able to jump right to what I need, create folders the way that I need to, instead of just having on one large interface. I like being able to see my actual scribes and then over to the side, having an organized folder that drops those scribes to the side. And again, that's all by preference, right? So I prefer Scribe for that reason. The next one is collaboration and editing, right? So while it is possible to collaborate and edit inside of Scribe, most of that is on the pro plan and Tango's is on the off the bat. Like you can just be able to edit um, the Scribe with the team on the bat, like that's not a problem. And then lastly, integrations. So I do feel that a lot of the integrations with Scribe are a bit more stronger than Tango. So Tango is very well known, but there are a lot more integrations that Scribe has when it comes to them being able to embed and go and do specific things. They have a lot more flexibility as to what you can do with the Scribes versus with Tango. Based off of what I've experienced in the past few years, I discovered Scribe first and then I discovered Tango. And then there, you know, I recommend any tool that automates and, you know, give someone complete autonomy to not have to screenshot their own processes is a game changer to me, right? But Scribe kind of holds dear and near to my heart just simply for the fact that I discovered them first and two, they, they are very, very strong in their community about making sure that they enhance the platform to make sure that it meets their users' needs. I highly recommend if I had to say out of the two, Scribe, like that's a given, right? but I do feel like it is up to you to decide which one is best for you. If you're looking for something more simple and not you know, as robust or, cause Scribe is you know, simple as well, but it's all about preference. But those are the main things that I've noticed out of the two that really separates them and draws a line between them, even though they are quite similar. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.